Welcome to Cell Clips. In this video, we will introduce the cytoskeleton and talk in detail about actin, one of the three main types of cytoskeletal filaments. The structure and function of the cytoskeleton is incredibly dynamic and diverse. In some ways, the cytoskeleton is like the framing of a house. It provides the cell with strength, structure, and shape. In other places in the cell, the cytoskeletal filaments are like roads that motor proteins use to transport cell products and vesicles. And finally, during certain processes, such as cell division, cytoskeletal filaments assemble and disassemble to enable the cell to move and contract. So as you can see, how the cytoskeleton looks and behaves will vary throughout the cell over time. Understanding its structure and function is key to understanding its role in each of these processes. There are three main types of cytoskeletal filaments, microtubules, intermediate filaments, and microfilaments made of actin. Today, we will focus on microfilaments the thinnest of the three with an average diameter of 8 nanometers. In spite of being thin and flexible, they are also quite strong. They are often found just beneath the plasma membrane, where they strengthen the cell and give it shape. In addition to their well-known role in muscle contraction, actin-based filaments are also involved in forming cell adhesions and helping the cell to move. With these functions in mind, let's now take a closer look at the structure of actin and how it is assembled. Filamentous actin also called F-actin, is a linear polymer consisting of a helical structure made of monomers called globular actin or G-actin. To form actin filaments, G-actin monomers first bind together to form tetramers in a process called nucleation. This is the rate-limiting step in actin filament formation. Once nucleation has occurred, more G-actins can rapidly bind to lengthen the filament. The G-actin monomer has two ends with different shapes and properties. A barbed end, also called the plus end, and a pointed end, also called the minus end. These names have nothing to do with charge, but simply refer to the processes occurring at either end. The plus end is where G-actin monomers can be added into a growing polymer, and the minus end is where monomers disassemble. G-actin is an ATPase, meaning it binds ATP and slowly hydrolyzes it to ADP. Only ATP-bound G-actin can be added to the plus end of a filament. ATP hydrolysis weakens the binding interaction of G-actin, so ADP bound G actin at the minus end dissociates. Microfilaments are dynamic polymers, continually growing from the plus end and shrinking from the minus end. Often, actin assembly and disassembly occur at the same rate. This is called treadmilling because there is no net change in the length of the filament, but monomers slowly process through the filament from the plus end to the minus end. However, there are specific times when the cell needs to initiate actin lengthening or shortening to aid various processes. So how can the cell regulate microfilament length? There are four ways the cell controls actin polymer length. It can change the rate of nucleation, the rate of assembly at the plus end, the rate of disassembly at the minus end, or it can change the stability of the actin filament overall. For example, a protein complex called ARP23 increases the rate of nucleation by mimicking the first tetramer so a filament can begin to lengthen. This protein can cause nucleation along the sides of pre-existing filaments to form branches. Another protein, called profilin, causes actin lengthening by binding G-actin to promote addition at the plus end. This increases the rate of addition while the rate of disassembly stays the same, causing the filament to lengthen. Another protein, CAPC, binds the plus end of F-actin to block incoming G-actin from being added. Disassembly continues, causing the filament to become shorter. Similar processes can happen at the minus end. Tropomodulin changes the rate of disassembly by binding the minus end of a filament to keep ADP-bound monomers from falling off, causing the filament to lengthen. A fourth protein, tropomyosin, binds the sides of actin to stabilize the filament. The combination of proteins also matters. In muscle cells, actin filaments are surrounded by CAPC on the plus end, tropomodulin on the minus end, and tropomyosin on the sides creating very stable filaments needed to resist the force of contraction. These are just a few of a complex repertoire of proteins that modulate actin length. So in short, actin is a cytoskeletal filament with many diverse functions, such as creating cell shape, adhesion, and motility. F-actin is composed of G-actin monomers that assemble first into tetramers in a rate-limiting step called nucleation. ATP-bound G-actins can then bind the plus end to lengthen the filament. When ATP bound to G-actins at the minus end is hydrolyzed, the monomers disassemble, causing the filament to shorten. 
Actin maintains a constant length when assembly and disassembly occur at the same rate in a state called treadmilling. Actin length can be altered by regulatory proteins that change either the rate of nucleation, the rate of actin assembly or disassembly, or the stability of the actin filament. As you can see, actin is a very dynamic filament that fills many unique functions in the cell. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching Cell Clips.